Blog Talk Radio. Hey, everybody. This is Michelle from We Can Bring You Hope. Um, I just want to let you know that this is a pre-recorded show. Um, this was recorded last week, um, and um, I am going to be speaking with uh, Donald Wells, but I have a few things that I want to say first. Um, you know, there's been a lot of... Um, craziness on social media as there always is with every case um it seems like a lot of the cases that or a lot of the things that have been going on with this case in particular have been like one thing after another after another and we can bring you hope has has been working with donald and candace for you know weeks now almost almost since right after um summer went missing um, let me just, for those of you who don't know, um, Summer is a missing five-year-old little girl from Rogersville, Tennessee. Uh, she went missing June 15th. She is three foot tall. She weighs 40 pounds. She has blonde hair and blue eyes. If you know anything about Summer's disappearance, I need you to call 1-800-TBI-FIND, or you can call tips to TBI at Tennessee.gov. Uh, or the Hawkins, Sheriff, Sheriff, Hawkins County Sheriff's Department, I apologize, at 423-272-7121. Um, she is listed at, um, in NICMIC and NamUs. Um, I, as I do with all of our cases, this is not specific to Summer's case. We, to our, you can call or text to our tip line at 724-466-4673. You can also leave tips on our website at uh, www.wecanbringyouhope.org. Um, before I even get started, I want to say something, because during one of the earlier broadcasts, there was a statement made that was misinformation that stated that we, We Can Bring You Hope, uh, represented themselves as private investigators, or, you know, there was a, statement, a misstatement. So I'm going to read you something that we posted on our website um, on... August 5th. In light of recent statements that were circulating over social media, We Can Bring You Hope would like to clear up some misinformation being stated about the organization. This misinformation was stated by a family that we provide support to in in a recent interview on YouTube uh, that we were private detectives. This information, while not intentional, was simply a wrong choice of words and was not accurate. Uh, While we do have access to private detectives, We conduct our own independent research, and the organization itself is an advocacy service. We do not advertise as private detectives, nor do we present ourselves as private detectives. We Can Bring You Hope is an organization that advocates for the missing. Uh, We state clearly on our website what our mission is, to advocate for the missing and support the families of the missing. I also want to add in here that we also work with uh, murdered and domestic violence uh, families, too. But that was not released in our statement. Um, our, other, our, our support services are catered to meeting with the various needs of the family with the ultimate goal of providing guidance and empowerment to those who have a missing loved one. We do not, will not, and have not conducted any interviews with any news reporters or podcasters or YouTubers regarding any of our families that we advocate for unless given specific permission from that family. All information that we share with the family or receive from the family is kept confidential. In instances where deemed necessary, we do submit information to law enforcement. We do not share that information with the public. We Can Bring You Hope continues to assist families all across the country without prejudice, without judgment, and with the goal of walking alongside the families of the missing until which time the missing come home. Um, So... With that being said, um, again, the story is, you know, this interview is going to be with uh, Mr. Wells, Donald Wells, and we're going to be discussing summer. That is it. Uh, Because our goal as an advocacy group is to speak for summer. So, Donald, how are you this afternoon? I'm trying to hang in there best I can, you know. Yeah, I know. It's hard. Um, Let's just go back to um like let's go back to before summer was born let's go back to when you met candace can you tell me a little bit about that oh yeah i mean 
we was in Arkansas, and when I just I just fell in love with her. I don't know, you know, it's just one of the things we fall in love with somebody, and we uh, tried everything in the world not to have kids, but ended up having four kids. You know, but um, I I don't know, nothing unusual. I don't think just uh, I don't know. We started out in a van, lived in our van for quite a while, and uh, worked. She worked with me for a long time. Uh, got her own, you know, our own place and everything up there, and uh, had job. Uh, uh, I don't know. Just we just worked all over Arkansas and Missouri. And got to know a lot of people up that way. And, uh, you know, I can remember us going through a small tornado up there. Always there working on a three-story condominium. And it broke all the doors. It broke a bunch of windows while we was in the building, and the parking lot was just turned into a river, basically. So that was kind of interesting. But, uh-huh. you know, eventually my mom got sick and needed help up here in Tennessee, so we come out here to help her, and she ended up leaving us the property. But, uh-huh. Um, well, we had Wyatt at first in Arkansas, too. And uh-huh. Then, uh, I think, you know, then we come here to Tennessee, and we had Waylon and Summer. So they okay. love it. Uh, what type of things did you guys do as a family, or what kind of type of things did does does Candace do with the kids? I know that um, um, I've seen a lot of photographs and videos on there. Um, you know, and the kids are you know running around and doing all sorts of outdoorsy stuff. What kind of things did they like to do? You know, I have to be honest. Uh, I, you know, I. Once we started having kids, I wanted her to be, she wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. You know, you can't trust people with your kids. Um, So she stayed at home, and I worked constantly. And so she got to be with them a lot. You know, thank goodness she got to be with them. But I I just worked all the time. And when I get home, you know, I I could enjoy some time with the kids and some family time. But for the most part, I was always working and always in trouble because I didn't spend enough time going out places and stuff, you know, because, you know, you get a day off, you want to do stuff, but you're just so tired and wore out, you don't, you know, so. Yeah, you work a pretty physical job. (laughs) Yeah, so so I was always in the hot water from Candace for not doing more to go here and there and everywhere. We tried. I tried. I did the best I could, and. But, you know. But, uh, so, do they like to go swimming and or fishing or? Oh yeah, we tried. We tried. You know, one of the favorite spots up here is up here at those uh, that lake up here. But we, we had some, we got a canoe and other stuff. Uh, I'd always take the kids with me out on the job site, uh, Josie and Wyatt, and. They find a big old dirt pile, and that's where they sit all day and play in the dirt all day, and they had a blast. You know? Right. So, when Summer was born, how did that change your life? I mean, I know it's a huge difference whenever you have boys and then you have a girl. I know that you know, in our family, I have two boys and a girl, and then I have uh, a little girl, a girl that I have, you know, that I'm taking care of now, my granddaughter. Um, you know, I've had her for a long time and, you know, I know that, you know, my husband, you know, she's wrapped, he's wrapped around her finger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A lot of shock having her, um, of course she, I was there when she was born C-section and when the doctor pulled her out, he handed her straight to me and I was, you know, a real, it it amazed me that she just wanted me. I don't know why, even as a baby, she just wanted me. And, you know, I mean, she wanted her mom too, don't get me wrong, but she she really wanted me more than I don't. And it just boggles my mind. I've never, never seen anything like that in my life. And, you know, and anybody, you know, when she got older, I mean, I, I held her, you know, she, for the, for the first 18 months, I'd say, 
she had had to help me and she when it was time to go to bed she said dad will you take me downstairs and put me you know lay with me for a while i go down there i'd lay with her for a while until she went to sleep you know and and i'd you know usually go back upstairs or whatever but but yeah i've never seen anything like that in my entire life and you know she she was a tough little girl she was so tough i mean she didn't care what anybody said about her whatever you know but if i said if i just said one word like in a mean tone she would break down and start crying but daddy daddy and just have tears running down her eyes not I'd have to apologize to her ten times, and I'd have to take it back whatever I said. <laughs> sorry, I said it. I'm sorry, and give her a big hug and everything. And I've never seen anything like that in my life. I don't know. A lo- most, most. I, I grew up in a family with all girls, and we were all really close with our dad. We were all daddy's little girls, and it sounds like that. So you know that that you know she looked up to you. You know yeah. she was a daddy's girl, and. You know, my sons, my sons were a lot closer to me. My daughter was a lot closer, you know, to her dad. And, you know, so, but my sons were always closer with me than, you know. But, so, I I know that, you know, I just really feel like, you know, there's been a lot of, you know, I feel like we need to refocus everything back onto summer. I feel like there's been a lot of out word things we're not going to talk about any of those and i just feel like you know we need to touch base because i know that there's a lot of businesses down there in your area that you know we don't have flyers in you know we we can bring you hope as facts a 200 mile radius of flyers and you know it boggles my mind that there's not flyers in the businesses down there and you know we are planning on coming down there um in september and, you know, trying to get out more flyers. Um, you know, we have we have um, some other groups that we work with, some other advocacy groups that we work with that are sharing, our, you know, the flyers. And, you know, I don't care as far as I'm concerned. I don't care whose flyers they share as long as they're sharing summer space. <laughs> because somebody has to know something or somebody has seen her somewhere. And, you know, I've had people ask me, you know, why do you have your tip line on there? You're not working with, you know, TBI. Well, I never said I was working with TBI, but our that, that tip line is on there for a reason. It's on there because people call our tip line and people leave information on there. And I've gotten information for Summer's case, and I turn it over to TBI. And people feel comfortable coming to us because we are not police and because they can talk to us and we can, you know, get information from them and not release their names to, to the police. And we turn it over. And, you know, we've done that since we opened in 2016. And so, you know, or 2017, sorry. Um, and we, you know, we can get information over to police. And, you know, you know, it, it just, that's what it is, what it is, you know. And it helps. It helps, you know, all of these cases that, you know, that we work on, not just summer. So, you know, I would be amiss if I said, if I put summer's flyer out there and didn't say, didn't have our tip line on there, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. People don't have to call that, but it's there if people want to call that. I'm not forcing anybody to call that. Um, but um, so, I mean, we, you know, we all know if, you know, do you want to go over anything about the day she went missing? If not, that's okay. Um, I mean, you've told this story a thousand times. Uh, I just really feel like, you know, I feel like I wanted to give you a voice where it was just focusing on summer, you know, um, and just, you know, what would you say to the people that, that have summer or uh, that took summer? Uh, well, I've said a lot of things to the people that uh, that's got her. You know, right. Tried to address that. And apparently, you know, they don't care. Um, and you know, and I've I've been I've been going around here, around our area and other areas at night. You know, and not in the night, but you know, in the evening. And uh, uh-huh. 
but uh, you just meet a lot of opposition. People don't want you in around their areas. You know, you know that battle that you're trying to fight against the whole world, trying to find your little girl in in a, in a, in everybody's fighting you all the way around. And I, and you know, there's these areas and these people. You just you just got to question them. You got to get in there. You know what? Right. And uh, and how do you do that? How do you fight a criminal element? Or whatever, and get inside their head, or whatever. And, you know, uh, we've done. You know that we've done a bunch of stuff behind the scenes, and a lot of it we haven't even shared with you. We've given you bits and pieces of stuff. Uh, um, and there's a reason why we do that. You uh, know, um, because I don't want anything that we have found, or you know, that we've dug into. I don't want that released to the public because I don't want it to jeopardize Summer's case. If it if if it turns out to be something that can be helpful, you know, uh, we turn everything over to CBI, and you know, we we give everything that we you know that we find to them. Um, spoken to a couple other people that we've given you know that we you know that we've decided that we thought it was a good thing to do. They were you know. Um, search organizations and, you know what I mean, and things like that. But we also have, you know, a group of people, like I said earlier, that we are getting together that, you know, we're going to come down there and we're going to do some things down there. I'm not going to be specific about it. But, you know, we don't, we, you know, we don't just sit on our hands. You know, we, we try to, you know, dig in and do what we can. Well, right, right. But, you know, me trying I don't know what the police are doing. I feel like I need to go out and look into certain certain areas. You know, because no. I do have a past. And I know, you know, if I was in one of these places, I would want my dad to come looking for me at no, all costs. Right. Um, I just wish I had some help. Well, we, you know, that's what we're working on. You know what well, I mean? We're we're working on getting people down there to, you know, help. We have some people that we have, you know, that are focusing on helping you do some of that and some people that are focusing on, um, you know, doing, you know, some more prayer vigils, which, you know, I know that that sounds, it, it just, I can't help but say that we have to pray. And, you know, we have to keep our face out there. You know, I know you guys are doing everything you can. I know I'm not. I know that right. know, we're doing everything they can. But right. I just feel that, you know, I wish somebody, some people from this area would help me. And maybe I'm not asking in the right way. Maybe it's my fault. Well, you like, know, you, you're you're a grieving father and Candace is a grieving mother. And, you know, it. That's why I'm saying that, you know, we're getting people down there that are going to assist you and, you know, and they can maybe, you know, they can, you know, help you do things a different way than what you're doing. You know, we've talked about this a thousand times, you know, when you're in the middle of a hole, you don't dig down, you look up. And that's the only way that you're going to get out of this. You know what I mean? That that we're going to, that summer is going to be found is if we keep her name out in the public, you know, and and we keep people looking at her face. Right. Mary, okay, you want to talk? Yeah, this is Mary. Um, yeah. I just want to say, too, okay. you shouldn't be searching alone. It's too that. dangerous for you to search alone. Yeah, I know. Yes, it is. I mean, you could get hurt or, you know, if you Shut did up. find Summer... They'll they'll try to set you up. You just got to be careful with yourself too. Yeah. You need to be around. Well, when we we don't we don't specific when we go out and we do boots on the ground searches. We I'll be honest with you. And Mary's been there for numerous searches that we've done. We do not let the family actually search. We have you at the meeting point, and then we have other people out there doing things because, you know, if if she's in the woods somewhere, 
but to say, I don't want you to come across that. That's not something that you should be seeing. Well, no. You know, and because believe me, it's not something that, that coming from somebody who has not found their family member, I've, I've found other people and it's not something that you easily forget. I cannot imagine finding my child or yeah. finding my loved one, you know, and you don't want to contaminate the crime scene. Right. Absolutely. You know? No. So. Well, I know that, you know, this was, you know, this was very hard for you because this is not, you know, an easy subject to talk about because this is your baby. Right. But, you know, you know, how, you know how cruel all this social media has been, you know, this unbelievable cesspool of evil. And when you get someone like Summer out of the blue, uh, or I didn't, shouldn't say out of the blue, but, you know, come into your life, like she has, like a whirlwind just took my heart. And, you know, it's so beautiful, so so sharing, so loving in every way. I always has a smile on her face and just loved with all she had. And then so, the evil takes her away and all this evil cesspool starts all over again. I've had this, you know, kind of stuff throughout my whole life like this. Um, I'm not sure everybody has, you know, and understands that. But she was stolen, you know, and and I turned to the wrong places, you know, Facebook, you know. But yeah. you know, I don't think people, unless you're in this situation, I actually have another uh, podcast I'm going to be doing. Uh, in a couple of days, I'm going to be releasing in a couple of days that, you know, I have some, some bigger cases like yours, like, you know, higher profile cases. Um, and, you know, I'm meeting with the family members from, from those cases because I want to put out, I want people to understand the ramifications of social media. Social media can be a wonderful tool, but social media can also be a horrible tool. Yeah. You know, I've had people dox me and, you know, post things about me. And, you know, my life is already an open book. I've been doxxed several times. And the people that I work with and the people that know me know all about me. And, you know, they, all the families, we have 47 active cases that we work right now. And the families that we work with know how I am. We've had numerous, I mean, Dawn, you know, I talk to you several times a day. Yes, you and, do. You know, and I talk to Candace several times a day. Yeah. And, you know, and it just, it, it, it is what it is. You know, I am i don't hide myself. I don't hide behind things. My business is registered to my name. And, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm honest and I'm, I'm forthcoming. And, you know, I'm here for summer. Just like I'm here for all of the other people that are missing and all of the other victims that were murdered that we deal with, their cases. And I'm here, we are here to help try to guide you through this horrific situation that you're going through. And, you know, and, you know, go ahead. How could could somebody turn around and say that's evil? You know, you try to do something good and people say it's evil. Well, you know, I'm also an ordained minister, and I swear, so maybe that's it. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. You know, it is what it is. You know, people are going to – I'm not everybody's cup of tea, and that's okay, you know. You know, but I work with the other organizations that, you know, we – you know, that we trust and that we we feel that we can work with, and, you know, we share – everybody's flyers on our pages and in our groups because I don't care. Something about so-and-so's flyer might catch their eye and they might want to share that one instead of ours. I don't, I don't, you know, whatever floats their boat. As long as they're sharing the flyers of all of our missing cases and all of the missing cases out there in the world and, you know, in the United States, then, then, you know, that's, that it, then it's done, you know, as long as, Somebody can bring 
answers home. And that, and that, you know, we can bring hope to people, and that's how we got our organizations. We can bring you hope. You know, I had a missing loved one that was gone for over two years. Luckily, I found her. Yeah. You know, and I brought her home, and it wasn't it – was, it wasn't easy, and it wasn't just, you know, right here, but it is what it is. And, you know, sorry. And, um, and you know, that's part of the reason why we can bring you hope is here, you know, because the people that volunteer here have been in this situation. You know, we, like I said, we, you know, we deal with the, the missing, we deal with the, the, uh, murdered, we deal with domestic violence, we deal with all sorts of crimes of people that have not gotten justice. And we work with those families and help them communicate with the law enforcement and help them communicate with their with their communities and try to keep the word out. So, do. so but, do you have anything else you want to say for tonight? Um. Uh, for today. <laughs> well, for me personally, uh, just God bless. God bless the people, the good people. Uh, I'm praying for everybody, you know, and uh, thanks for your prayers and help, everybody who's helping. Okay. Um, okay, again, this case is about Summer Wells. And, you know, if you have anything that you know about Summer or that can bring her justice or can bring her home, please send credible tips to um, the TBI um, and, you know, or you can email them, um, tips at TBI. Um, Sorry. And, you know, we can get these answers home and get this little girl home, you know, and get her found because wherever she is, is not where she's supposed to be. And, you know, I've had somebody, you know, on our social media say, you know, she was in a better place. Well, she's not in a better place. <laughs> no matter where she is, she's not in a better place. Because kids that go missing are not in a better place. And that just breaks my heart that people even think like that. Yeah. It's it's not, that's not Okay. So um, you can call TBI at 1-800-TBI-FIND, Hawkins County Sheriff's Department at 423-272-7121. Tips can be emailed to tips to tbi at tennessee.gov, or you can use our tip line. It's up to you. I'm not making anybody. You can call or text 724-466-4673, or you can leave a tip on our tip porthole on our website at www.wecanbringyouhope.org. And we, you know, we send out much love and prayers for summer. And we, you know, we hope she's home soon. And I would like to thank you, Dawn, for taking part in, you know, doing this and, you know, bringing, um, you know, some attention to your to your daughter's case. She's a beautiful little girl, and I hope that your family can heal soon. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you so much. Okay, we'll see y'all later. Uh Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.